And we are back. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 1 and 2. I, Paul, am an apostle on special assignment for Christ, our living hope. Under God, our Savior's command, I'm writing this to you, Timothy, my son in the faith. All the best from our God and Christ be yours. Verse 3 to 4. On my way to the province of Macedonia, I advised you to stay in Ephesus. Well, I haven't changed my mind. Stay right there on top of things so that the teaching stays on track. Apparently, some people have been introducing fantasy stories and fanciful family trees that digress into silliness instead of pulling the people back into the center, deepening faith and obedience. Verse 5 to 7. The whole point of what we're urging is simply, is simply love. Love uncontaminated by self-interest and counterfeit faith. A life open to God. Those who fail to keep this point soon wander off into dead ends of gossip. They set themselves up as experts on religious issues, but haven't the remotest idea of what they're holding forth with such imposing eloquence. Verse 8 to 11. It's true that moral guidance and counsel need to be given, but the way you say it and to whom you say it are as important as what you say. It's obvious, isn't it? That the law code isn't primarily for people who live responsibly, but for the irresponsible, who defy all authority, riding roughshod over God, life, sex, truth, whatever. They are cynical toward this great message I've been put in charge of by this great God. Verse 12 to 14. I'm so grateful to Christ Jesus for making me adequate to do this work. He went out on a limb, you know, entrusting me with this ministry. The only credentials I brought to it were violence and witch hunts and arrogance. But I was treated mercifully because I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know who I was doing it against. Grace mixed with faith and love poured over me and into me, and all because of Jesus. Verse 15 to 19. Here's a word you can take to heart and depend on. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. I'm proof, public sinner number one, of someone who could never have made it apart from sheer mercy. And now he shows me off evidence of his endless patience to those who are right on the edge of trusting him forever. Deep honor and bright glory to the king of all time, one God, immortal, invisible, ever and always, oh yes. I'm passing this work on to you, my son Timothy. The prophetic word that was directed to you prepared us for this. All those prayers are coming together now so you will do this well, fearless in your struggle, keeping a firm grip on your faith and on yourself. After all, this is a fight we're in. Verse 19 to 20. There are some, you kn there are some, you know, who by relaxing their grip and thinking anything goes have made a thorough mess of their faith. Hymenaeus and Alexander are two of them. I let them wander off to Satan to be taught a lesson or two about not blaspheming. 1 Timothy chapter 2 The first thing, verse 1 to 3, the first thing I want you to do is pray. Pray every way you know how, for everyone you know. Pray especially for rulers and their governments to rule well so we can be quietly about our business of living simply in humble contemplation. This is the way our Savior God wants us to live. Verse 4 to 7. He wants not only us, but everyone saved, you know, everyone to get to know the truth we've learned, that there's one God and only one, and one priest mediator between God and us, Jesus, who offered himself in exchange for everyone held captive by sin, to set them all free. Eventually, the news is going to get out, this and this alone, sorry, this and this only has been a, my appointed work. 
getting this news to those who have never heard of God and explaining how it works by simply by simple faith and plain truth. Verse 8 to 10. Since prayer is at the bottom of all this, what I want mostly is for men to pray, not shaking angry fists at enemies by raising holy hands to God, but by raise but ra sorry, let me read that again. Verse 8 to 10. Since prayer is at the bottom of all this, what I want mostly is for men to pray not shaking angry fists at enemies, but raising holy hands to God. And I want women to get in there with the men in humility before God, not primping before a mirror or chasing the latest fashions, but doing something beautiful for God and becoming beautiful doing it. Verse 18 to 15. I don't let women take over and tell men what to do. Uh, correction. Verse 11 to 15. I don't let women take over and tell the men what to do. They should study to be quiet and obedient along with everyone else. Adam was made first, then Eve. Women, woman was deceived first, our pioneer in sin, with Adam right on her heels. On the other hand, her childbearing brought about salvation, reversing Eve. But this salvation only comes to those who continue in faith, love, and holiness. Gathering it all into maturity, you can depend on this. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. If anyone wants to provide leadership in the church, good. But there are preconditions. A leader must be well thought of, committed to his wife, cool and collected, accessible and hospitable. He must know what he's talking about, not be over fond of wine, not pushy but gentle, not thin skinned, not money hungry. He must handle his own affairs well, attentive to his own children and having their respect. For if someone is unable to handle his own affairs, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a new believer, lest the position go to his head and the devil trip him up. Outsiders must think well of him, or else the devil will figure out a way to lure him into his trap. Verse 8 to 13. The same goes for those who want to be servants in the church. Serious, not deceitful, not too free with the bottle, not in it for what they can get out of it, they must be reverent before the mystery of the faith, not using their position to try to run things. Let them prove themselves first. If they show they can do it, take them on. No exceptions are to be made for women. Same qualifications. Serious, dependable, not sharp-tongued, not over-fond of wine. Servants in the church are to be committed to their spouses attentive to their own children and diligent in looking after their own affairs. Those who do this servant work will come to be highly respected, a real credit to this Jesus faith. Verse 14 to 16. I hope to visit you soon, but just in case I'm delayed, I'm writing this letter so you'll know how things ought to go in God's household. This God alive church, bastion of truth, this Christian life is a great mystery, far exceeding our understanding, but some things are clear enough. He appeared in a human body, was proved right by the invisible spirit, was seen by angels. He was proclaimed among all kinds of peoples, believed in all over the world, taken up into heavenly glory. Amen. Amen.